In this video, we're going to talk about impedance or Z parameters, a two, two port model, two port network model. <clears throat> and um, uh, th in this model, we, uh, our, our goal is to come up with a set of values, a set of matrix that allows us to relate. Um, voltage to current so v1 v2 to current i1 i2 in a two port network which has been drawn earlier um, basically has two ports i1 coming in here and we are using passive notation so this would be v1 and this would be v2 and the current from this direction would be I2. This is called uh, Z parameter and will uh, become pretty obvious uh, soon why it's called a Z parameter. So row one, column one is referred to as Z11 parameter. Uh, Z12 of course would be row one, column two, and on and on. Now, um, using some basic matrix uh, uh, calculation, uh, we know that the first row will be equal to the first row multiplied by the vector. So we'll have Z11 I1 plus Z12 I2. And then we do the same thing for the second row. We'll have Z21 um, I1 plus z22 i2 so that was pretty straightforward from uh, the matrices we wrote this is the z parameter matrix now we can also take this and if you make a couple of assumptions if we assume that i2 is equal to zero what does that mean that basically means we are assuming that port two is open if port two is open in other mode i2 is zero we plug that on the on these two equations we will end up with two relationships with that allows us to find z11 in terms of uh, v1 over i1 and allows us from the second equation to find um, z Two one as v two over i one. Now <clears throat> the next one is if we go ahead and say i one is equal to zero. Now let's take a look at that and see. Okay, what is when is i one zero? I one is zero when port one is open. If port one is open then we will have um, from these two equations, from the first equation, we will have Z12 equal to V1 over I2. And from the second equation, we will have Z22 equal to V2 over I2. The reason they call this imp uh, impedance parameter is because all the parameters to fill in the matrix come from dividing voltage by current and therefore the unit for F, one of these is ohm and this, this is indeed impedance. So this, uh, this uh, Z parameters fully define the matrix. Now, when you're working with this kind of problem, um, you can take two approaches. Um, so let's go ahead and start with what we would call black box approach that's alternative one that basically means you have been given a box and it has two ports exposed that you can access and you're asked to find out what the um what the um, z11 write the z, uh, z parameters for this 
so in the black box case, you will have a voltmeter, you will have an ammeter, you will have a power supply available to you, and your job is to find out what um, they are. So let's say we will come in here and uh, um, we will place a, and of course, this is uh, I1, this is I2, this is plus and minus V2, this is plus and minus V1, and on and on. And then what we can do in, in a black box case, we're basically black. The reason I call it black box is because you can't get inside the box and look to see what circuitry is in there and be able to do the analysis. So what you could do is say, all right, um, I have access to devices, so I can put, let's say, a voltage here. Let's say one volt, make life simple. simple. We'll put a one volt in here, which means our V1 is set to one volts. And then, and then we leave the other side open. And with this, we are able to, since I2 is open, we can use these set of equation here to find Z11 uh, and Z22, uh, Z, uh, yeah, Z11, because what we can do, we can put an ammeter here and find that value. Okay, so that's, that's, that's how it's done here. That would allow us, since we have an ammeter, we know I1, we can put a voltmeter here and measure V2. So based on these numbers, we know that Z11, we have the current I1 in here. We have the V1, therefore we find Z11. Uh, on this side, we have the V2 because we have voltmeter across it. We have IR. And by the way, this I2 is equal to zero. Voltmeter can look like an open uh, because it's really large impedance. We can get away with that. So to find Z12 and Z22, we can literally reverse the process. And let's go back and reverse the process. Um, what we can do, we can put a, we can put a voltmeter, uh, I'm sorry, a, a voltage source in here. Let's say one volt. And then we can measure the current through here. And then we can also measure the volt in here so if we do that we can use that information to solve for this this is this approach is called what black box where we don't know what's in there we have power supply we have uh, ammeters and all of that available to us and then we can um, solve, uh, figure this out so the way this data is usually given to you let's let's do an example and you may be told that i2 was equal to zero. Uh, V1 was set to 10 volts, and I1 was measured at, let's say, at 5 milliamps, and V2 was measured at 5 volts. Okay, and then you could also come in and say, okay, the next time I1 was left open, and then a V2 of 6 volts uh, or uh, so yeah, six volts were put in there and then the I2 was measured at 10 milliamps and V1 was measured at um, uh, 12 volts. So, so these, this is kind of what a potential um, set of numbers would look like. So all you have to do is you can apply it to these uh, set of equations and find out. So from the first, uh, first set, we can determine that Z one one is 10 divided by 5 milliamp so 10 volts divided by 0 0.005 which tells us that is going to be um, <clears throat> uh, so 5 milliamp that would be 200 so 2 kilo ohms and or let's let's go ahead and write it in terms of 2000 ohms and then uh, z1 Z21 is equal to V2 over I1 from the above equation, which means V2 is 5 divided by 0 0.005, which means it's a thousand. And then from the second equation, we can apply um, to find Z12 as uh, uh, 12 divided by 10 milliamps. 
uh, which uh, would be one, 1200 ohms and uh, from that same equation we can also find z22 as 6 divided by 0.001 or 600 oops there's one too many ohms in here 600 ohms so therefore from here we we can do the model the model the matrix so the z parameters are in this particular case will end up being 2000 um, and then um, then so so we would have z11 and z21 from the first set of numbers we are we achieved that we got and then this 1200 will go up here and 600 would go here now based on this we literally can write this equation and be able to for any given i2 and i1 be able to find the corresponding would be so that's a z parameter and this approach is referred to as a black box a white box approach on the other hand is uh, so the white box approach on the other hand is where we have the electrical circuits uh, are given to us and our challenge is to see if we can write the parameters so we can relate the voltage and the current together. So for a simple example, maybe let's start with a simple example. Um, we might have a 10K kilo ohms resistor here, a 20 kilo ohms here, and another five kilo ohms here, and then so this is this is what is inside our two port network with this being one port and this being the other port so if that is our two port then they want us to find the z parameter for this one since we know the circuitry now we can actually um, take a uh, uh, use our KCL KVL Ohm's law approach to be able to solve that so if we leave I1 open I'm sorry uh, yeah port 1 open so I1 is equal to 0 so then we we'll start looking at Z12 being the V1 over I2 so this port is open so no current is going here which means when I2 comes in here, it's going to go here and then it's going to go through here. So V1, the voltage, there's no current here, so there's no um, voltage drops of V1. It's going to be across the 20K. So V1 over I2 is simply 20K. Okay. And then um, we can also use this condition to see if we can find Z22, um, uh, which is V2 over i2 so if you look over here and say okay do we know what's v2 over i2 yeah if there's no current going in here there's no voltage drop and all of this current current is going through 5 and 20k therefore z22 which is v2 over i2 will simply be 25 kilo so basically we're using all the knowledge we have from our earlier work to like kcl kvl ohms law parallel resistors series resistors to solve this and the other condition we have, we have we only found two so to find the other two we said the condition is that we're going to go ahead and set i2 equal to zero with this approach we can find z11 which is uh, v1 over i1 so if i2 is zero that means no current is flowing through this side that means all of i1 is going through here and back out that means that if the impedance of v1 over i1 would be the sum of these two uh, impedances so it's 300 or resistance which is 330 kilo ohms and then z21 is basically v2 over i1 or 20 kilo ohms that um, that gives us kind of a good summary of this approach 
this set of parameters. This was the first one we were doing. The rest of the parameters are very, very similar. Uh, they're just the relationships between I and V will change depending on which parameter we're looking for. So you can, <clears throat> we can represent it as a matrix form uh, or we can write it as an equation. And a couple of good things that help us out is by first sending the parameter that is right here equal to zero that allows us to simplify and find some other thing. And then by uh, setting the second parameter equal to zero, we can find additional um, additional parameters. By, by going through these two processes, it finds everything. Black box is a case where we're given a black box. We can't open it. We can't look at the circuit, but we got volt meter, amp meters, and all that. So end of the day, we would have, for different conditions, we would have uh, values that we can plug into either the original equation or sometime we get lucky and we get the data that it's I1 is equal to zero or I2 is equal to zero. Not lucky, if you have control, we like to do it. So I1 is equal to zero, I2 is zero, and find the numbers. But sometimes we are not the measuring people. We just are given a set of measurements that doesn't match that in that case. We have to plug the measurements on back to the original two system of systems of two equations and solve it to find the answer. And then uh, answer being the Z parameter. White box, on the other hand, is where we can actually look inside the nether for the name white box. And in there, we have the circuitry. And in that case, we just look at, we said we will open up one side and we look to see if we can find values that it is equal to V1 over I2 and then V2 over I2 and on. That brings us to the end of kind of giving you a sense of the white box, black box approach in the context of the Z or impedance parameter two port network model. Um, so that brings us to the end of this section.